Well, so this is the first summit that Adjutant's actually become an official project of OpenStack itself. So this talk is kind of somewhere between an introduction and a project update as to Adjutant itself. Mostly, well, I'm gonna give you a bit of history as to the project itself, where it came from and how we built it and why we built it in that way. And also try and maybe segue a little bit into why fitting it into OpenStack actually is a reasonably good idea and what benefits that service actually provides to OpenStack itself. I'm also going to do a bit of a live demo in, against our production environment of actual use cases that exist already for us and we've already deployed. And hopefully that will go well. So we'll see how that goes. So why does Adjutant exist? OpenStack is a powerful collection of services that offer a lot of really good tools when it comes to flexibility in regards to infrastructure as a service. But for a lot of public clouds, and most clouds as well, to manage your users and their details, you need a lot more than what is offered in OpenStack itself. You're normally storing information in other systems. You need <laughs> custom business logic requirements that just don't really fit anywhere within OpenStack itself. And you even need workflows for bringing new customers on board, being able to set up everything you need for them, and fixing all of the pieces in place that need to exist once that user has been set up. Or maybe you need just basic quality of life things, like the ability for a user to reset their password, or maybe you know be able to just do basic role management in a way that is more fine-grained than Keystone necessarily offers. It, yeah. And the thing is, OpenStack itself has a lot of the pieces needed for this. The primitives are there in Keystone, and you just need to know how to use them. The problem being, a lot of them are admin specific. You, you can't expose them directly to users in a safe way. So, Adjutant acts as a reasonably good stopgap to let you kind of minimize that. So, we needed a service that could do that. It, it needed to fit in between and basically fit with an open stack, but fulfill the goal of handling all this missing logic and act as a little bit of a layer on top that bridge the gaps we needed. So, so one of the biggest problems is that customer data doesn't really belong in Keystone. When you're dealing with things like, well, addresses and phone numbers and so on, you don't really have anywhere to put that. And Keystone isn't the right place for that. It has fantastic primitives for users and projects, information and access control, but if you're trying to build a customer entity out of that, you need way more than this. The customer exists in, the, in, in far more than that concept. And OpenStack doesn't need that information. It makes no sense for that information to be in OpenStack. But at the same time, a lot of the things you're doing in OpenStack require information about that. You need, you, some of the ways that your customers will interact with OpenStack depend on how they exist in your external systems. Adjutant in its first design, designs phase actually started as a more complicated service, one that would act partly as a hybrid CRM and an account management service. It would store all this information and act as a layer on top, handling user automation and all, all of these various things. It would handle signups, basic access control, quotas, projects. And thankfully, we didn't quite go that far. It, mostly because no organization really needs yet another place to store customer data. Most co companies already have an ERP or a CRM where they are holding this information. So why not leverage that? Why not? build instead something that can sit in the middle, that can talk to Keystone and the other OpenStack services, that can talk to your ERP, and can kind of merge that together and glue it in a way that makes sense and is reasonably useful. And then, for things that do need to affect both Keystone and your ERP, Adjutant, that service in the middle, it can affect both. It, it acts as that bridge between the two. You interact with it, and it handles the appropriate things you need. So we started by building Adjutant mostly to handle one task. And amusingly enough, that task has actually been on the, working group missing the public cloud working group missing features list for a very long time. And 
That was sign up and user registration. Essentially, an API that takes some sign up form data and posts it and gets it and then runs through some validation and ultimately creates a valid, fully functioning user and customer account. And that's not, I mean, that's ultimately what we needed. So we needed something that would take post data from a web form or sign up form, validate it. It would do some basic notes on that and then let us decide whether we wanted that customer. And this was the first step. This, this is probably a little bit more complicated than it needs to be, but it talks about how there are multiple steps involved in such a process. And essentially what you need is a bit of a workflow service. So by the end of the process, you end up with things created in Keystone and things created in your ERP system. So once we actually built the sign up, or at least most of the prototypes there, we actually realized that what we've actually built is effectively an underlying workflow framework, one that lets us build workflows around these kind of business logic tasks and then expose them over specific account management APIs. We, in turn, could actually use that to build a lot of features that kind of help in the account management space. For example, allowing non-admins to invite others to their project. Managing the roles of users on your project based on a role hierarchy so that what roles you, you have depend on what roles you can also edit. Letting users reset their passwords. We have had so many people who have needed to reset their password and without that functionality, we have to manually do it and email them or text them a temporary password so they can reset it, which is awful user experience, which by building a little bit of extra logic on top, we've managed to build that into OpenStack. Then we have also means of letting users request and manage their quotas, and even are working on features that will let them manage their child projects, so sub-projects, and in turn the users on those, so that you have a lot more control over the actual access and identity you have over, over your customers. But we also realized that well, every company has very specific requirements, and you don't really want to start putting that into this core code base. There's, there's no point. You end up with a giant mess that no one really knows anything about or understand it. So we realized we had to add plugins because we would not add custom company code to this. Not that we wouldn't want to open source it, purely because it pollutes what the service could be and how it's useful to others. It, it makes more sense for us to build a good framework and a good platform, which then others can build on top of. And that's what we wanted. We wanted to be something that out of the box has a bunch of features that are useful to a lot of clouds, and on top of that also has the building blocks and the basic frameworks that you need to build extra management things for your specific cloud and integrate with your ERP system, your CRM, or other features or other systems that are important to your specific cloud. Now, we make fairly extensive use of Adjutant's, plug, Adjutant's plugin mechanism for our own cloud, mostly because we have a lot of custom data in the ERP system, and we don't entirely, sorry, and we don't necessarily keep that in Keystone, of course. So we have in our ERP system a concept of actually keeping a mapping between the Keystone project and the actual customer themselves. So in our API system, we actually have a table of projects which stores the information about the project ID as in Keystone, and that that in turn links to a lot of information about the customer themselves. Adjutant helps bridge that gap. But Adjutant doesn't have any concept of this by default because Adjutant, by, by its own situation, or the way it's built, it manages solely things in OpenStack. But with the plugin mechanism, we have built customizations to it that do understand how our ERP structure works, where that mapping exists, and how to make use of it. And this, in turn, means that we can build workflows specific to our cloud that make sense for it, how we store it, customer information, their billing details, their account information, or even just their customer history. So why is Adjutant useful in OpenStack? Well, the problem we're trying to solve is a tough one, purely because there is no one-size-fits-all solution to this. It's a wide, varied, overly complicated problem. Every company is different and has different requirements. That's why our goal with Adjutant wasn't to make a perfect solution. There just isn't one. 
In fact, there's nothing been in this space because everyone's been trying to create the perfect solution when that isn't really a, a way forward. So instead, what we tried to do was create the least awful solution, which sounds a bit counterintuitive, but well, you, it's better than nothing. And at least it means that we've got a place now to collaborate. So, and also, because of how we built it and how our company needs to work, we focus on upstream, we tend to focus on open source, and we built this so that others could collaborate, so that this serves as a good place to start where we can, as a bunch of public cloud providers or even other cloud providers, build a service that lets us handle those slightly weird business requirements that don't really fit anywhere else in OpenStack. Over time, the amount of overlap between all the various clouds will get better. Adjutant will grow, and the bits that everyone shares will, of course, get expanded on. But the problem is that can't start until there is somewhere to collaborate, until we actually have a service that does this. And that is why Adjutant was ultimately added to the OpenStack project, why it exists as an official project, because we need this. And it actually fulfills some of the basic features that are there. So what exactly is Adjutant? Well, you know now it's history, why it exists, and that it's an official project. And I've probably sufficiently rambled and confused most of you as to what it probably is. So let me give you a brief overview and try to give you a better summary of what the service actually is. For users, it is an API service with a horizon-based GUI that has role-based access control for controlling what APIs you can talk to, and it, it gives users access to account management actions. Underneath that is a framework for building workflows in code. API, and then you can build APIs around them and expose them to your users. Without any custom, yeah. And we also have, in Adjutant itself, a lot of APIs that just by themselves are quite useful. Without any customizations, most clouds will probably end up running them. And then we also have many which service templates that you can build on top of. Which of the APIs you expose is entirely configurable because maybe your cloud already has a password reset mechanism. You don't need adjutants. So you don't turn that feature on. Or maybe you have an LDAP-based cloud or a federated cloud, so you don't want adjutant handling roles for you. Well, you turn that feature off. It's a service that effectively lets you plug in what you need. And the plugins let you build additional workflows yourself. You can build on top of the primitives we have already there. You can build new actions, new workflows, new APIs, and then you install those plugins and say, I want to, to enable this API. Adjutant also has a Horizon-based UI component for all of the core features that exist in the APIs. All of the core APIs that Adjutant has, we have built API Horizon views for, so that you can play with what's already there. But any customizations you do or any custom APIs you make, you'll have to build your own Horizon views for. And of course, there's more to it than that. This is a very quick overview, but essentially, it is a framework for building and exposing account management specific APIs in a way that doesn't require you to build a microservice for each with enough reusable elements to make it worthwhile to share the workload, to make sure the burden isn't carried just by one company every time. And as for features, well, a lot of the APIs that are present by default, I'm going to show you a live demo. And everyone tells me not to do live demos. I don't know why. Maybe they go wrong quite often. But I'm risking it this time because I'm actually going to be using our production environment. Features that already exist are tested. And if anything actually goes wrong, I probably shouldn't be here. I should be running off looking at logs or potentially drinking a lot of hard liquor. But let's hope it doesn't come to that. So, First things first, let's start with a sign up. And conveniently, I've actually got pre filled form data here. So, and I'm going to sign up as an organization. And I have some of the worst addresses possible. And we're in New Zealand. So. Now, this web form 
this sign-up process here on our website, will actually post to the adjutant API. And then that, in turn, will trigger a bunch of validation steps, which we can then look at. One of our account managers will be notified that the sign-up has come in, and in turn, they will look at it, review the information about it, and figure out whether this is a customer that we do actually want. And the validation notes will tell us, is this someone we already have in our system? Might they be a duplicate of someone we already have? And various information around that. And the ability to expand that to something that tells you whether this might be a suspicious customer, all that information is, is, is possible. You can add additional actions to that workflow. Now, of all of the APIs and adjutant that we've built, this is the one we've customized the most because there is a default sign-up API in adjutant. It's very basic. It exposes a panel in the horizon that lets you just sign up and ask for a project. And that works solely in OpenStack. So this variant builds on top of that API and instead builds one that's specific to what we need from the customer, what we need to put in our ERP system. So the sign-up is now done. And if I look in my email, I have notification here in our system that this sign-up has come through. And this here is the email that I, as the person signing up, get telling me that it's in our system and we're looking at it. And then, as an admin, if I refresh this, there will be a new sign-up here. And I can look at the information about it what the actual data as part of the sign-up is, and some basic validation notes. There's not too many here because there's nothing too wrong with this sign-up here, and it's telling me a few things, and telling me what project name it'll create, making sure the user isn't there, a few basic things. And because, let's say I potentially renamed or misnamed my company, we'll, we'll go in and we'll actually change that. And this is a case where if potentially you've talked to the customer and they've what have I done? <laughs> so, there. Because occasionally customers do screw up in their web forms. All right. And now what that's actually done is triggered additional revalidation of that data. And if you can see here, it's proposed a new project name for me based on the company name that I've now updated. So I'm going to go ahead and approve this. And this is actually going to create me as a customer on our cloud. It's going to create a Keystone project, a user, a basic default network and a router so that I can launch instances right away. And it's going to email me a token to be able to set up a password. Now, in this whole process, I've not asked for a password because we don't have anywhere to store it temporarily, especially since this is a, a, a system that requires us to actually take an approval step. So now, if I go to my email, I conveniently have here a nice email telling me about our documentation and a few bits and pieces around actually what our cloud is, including a link here, actually I'll, a link here to set up my password. So let's set this up. And now this sign-up is completed. Everything exists. This user is now a real account on our cloud. And now, if I take that email I put in here, which I do not want to have to type out, I can sign in. And I exist. This is I can launch instances, upload objects to Swift, do various things. But before I do any of, before I play with this, I'm actually going to sign out and I'm going to pretend I forgot my password because this is a surprisingly common use case. So let's throw my email in there. And if my user actually exists, I'll get an email with a token to reset my password, which I have. <coughs> All right.
Now, of course, I probably want to also collaborate with someone because it doesn't entirely make sense for me to maybe do this by myself. Maybe I want to invite someone to my project who can actually help me build whatever infrastructure I want to build on this cloud. So I'll do that. All I need is an email. So I'll invite, well, Summit Demo 2 if my keyboard plays nice with me. And for now, we'll just give them project member. So we've got here saying that we've got this user invited. Their status is invited. They don't exist yet. This user will not actually get created until they submit their final password. So if I check my email again, I have this invi invitation. It tells me who invited me, what project I'm being invited to, and provides me with a link telling me that I can set up my account. And if this, if this was a user that already existed on our cloud, what they would instead get, rather than setting up a password, this link would just ask them to confirm that they wanted access to this project. But essentially it's a nice simple way to invite and manage users. So, now we have this other user. But, and if I refresh this, we should now see, oh, it locked me out of both. So now we can see that both of these users exist. I can see what roles they even have on this project. But maybe my friend actually needs a little bit more privileges. So what we'll do is we'll actually bump them up to, in this case, project moderator. And what the project moderator role actually does is it gives them the ability to manage roles, just like I can. But it gives them access to only a subset of the roles I have. For example, they can't edit my roles because I have a role above them, which is project admin. So it means that while they can actually do a bunch of stuff here, they can't entirely remove me from my own project. And that a little bit of extra fine-grained control over how you can manage those roles makes a lot of difference, we found. And it means that you can start building things that are useful for the customers. And one of the other things that we've started playing with is in Adjutant, being able to actually map control which roles a user can manage on information outside of just the roles you have. So for example, in your ERP system, your customer is set up to effectively be set up as in maybe a reseller, for example. And that means that you potentially want them to be able to add additional reseller-based roles to their users. So Adjutant will be able to check in your ERP system what information this is and change that list of manageable roles based on external data. And we intend to do that by changing some of the mechanisms in Adjutant to be quite pluggable, so that in certain ways you can basically override some of the functionality that is there to make it useful for these kind of specific cases. Because being able to control exactly what roles a user can manage in certain ways becomes infinitely useful. And it does so in a way that doesn't require complicated logic in Keystone, where this kind of business logic for role management doesn't really make sense. So, I've given you a bit of an overview of that, and I've also mentioned quota management. And in this case, this is something that's built into Adjutant. Um, and in fact, actually, all of these views, other than the sign-up I've been showing you, are part of Core Adjutant itself. There's very little customization here, actually no customization. So it, it kind of is just basic stuff we've built into the service that is, should ideally be useful to any cloud. So the concept of quotas here is, in, in, in our cloud, we found that when someone asks for quota increase, they usually want to bump vCPUs as well as instances as well as RAM. So it makes sense to treat these as grouped sizes. And I can, in this case, ask for a quota update in one of our regions. And depending on certain criteria, this might actually be automatically approved. I might just instantly get a larger quota because I've reached it and I've been a, a long-standing customer. So in this case, I'll bump up to a medium, or ask to be. And what that'll do is add that to Adjutant, which will in turn double check whether this can be automatically approved. And if not, it'll notify an account manager who will then look at this, review the request that's come in, and either approve it or cancel it. Maybe even talk to the customer and ask, 
what are you going to be building on our cloud that, need, that you need this much quota? Which sometimes, depending on your capacity, can be quite useful. But it also means that ideally in a lot of circumstances, you are actually letting your users manage this themselves. The problem with live demos. Ah, there we go. So here we go. It successfully created the task, but it requires admin approval. And down here we have the information about it. And in fact, if this was approved, this would keep the history down here as well. So you, you knew about your previous quota changes and could see what other people have requested previously. And like some of the criteria we're actually going to be doing for this is if a customer has any unpaid invoices, they don't get a quota up update approved. If they are jumping beyond an adjacent size, they don't get it automatically approved. And they only and the other criteria that we've set is you have to have at least one paid invoice before we let this work. But once that's the case, we don't actually ever have to interact with a customer about their quota. This just handles that based on reasonably sensible logic as to what can be automatically approved. So the last step actually is a feature that isn't yet in Agile itself. It's actually done entirely through plugins. And some of this will actually exist in Agile itself once the features are done in Keystone. But until then, it mostly exists as plugins that you can build on top of Agile itself. And effectively, Agile exposes a workflow to let you set up a multi-factor authentication account, a setup on your account. Effectively, it will require you to scan this, and you can probably scan it yourselves. And this user will be deleted afterwards, so it doesn't matter too much. And once I do that, I can generate a passcode and pass it to Adjutant. Adjutant now confirms that the passcode I've supplied it actually is valid and matches the secret it's about to create for me in Keystone. And then it will turn on multi-factor authentication for myself. And it, that workflow is necessary because it means that I actually have the ability to generate a valid passcode before my user has that feature turned on. And there is work going on in Keystone itself to enable full user uh, multi-factor authentication. But the problem with it is that it'll still need a workflow like this to make it useful and safe for customers, which is why eventually that workflow, as built specifically for the features that are being built in Keystone, will exist in core, in core adjutant, unlike the one that I'm showing here. And I will actually go through it. If I scan this barcode, I now have a passcode, I can supply that. Adjutant will verify that the passcode matches, the one that it generates. It will then activate that in Keystone. Did I actually click Submit? I don't think I did. And now the passcode has changed. Oh, the problems of multi-factor authentication. Right. And it will log me out and require me to log in again. So now I can actually log in with that user and try and log in with the standard password. It doesn't work. But If I supply the passcode, it does. So, those are the features that Adjutant currently has in it. And we intend, of course, to add more. So if I go back to my presentation. So, Going forward, we do have quite a, more, quite a lot more features planned, ranging from proper control for sub-projects in ways that don't quite fit in Keystone, and adding a bit more kind of fine-grained controls for a bunch of things. We also have some plans for managing additional service users, so kind of like application credentials and kind of like the invite workflow that we've got, but inviting service users that specifically don't need to be an email, but instead are built in the format of use of user-specified name at project ID. 
which will allow something similar to this invite process, but allowing you to create fully fledged users that actually can act as service accounts. Then there's a few more things coming up, and we'll, we'll be playing with that and updating some of our docs upstream to kind of reflect what's happening. But the main focus of Stein right now is internal refactors. And it doesn't sound very glamorous, but by the end of Stein, we want to clean up some code that doesn't quite make sense and hopefully encourage other people to, well, it'll hopefully encourage other people to help contribute once that stuff makes a little bit more sense. We also want to split the service into an API and workers so that we can start doing some smarter things around longer running tasks and also potentially more interesting autonomous auditing of tasks and automatic task status checking. We also want to make more elements of the service pluggable so that notifications and identity management can be tweaked better per deployment. For example, giving Agitin the ability to work with Keystone and LDAP directly for managing users. So then in the case that you have a keystone that's backed by an LDAP and you want to still be able to manage those users, Agitant can instead talk directly to Ad LDAP or, Ad or Active Directory and do the editing of users there. Or if you do have a pure keystone deployment, then that already mostly works. There's, there's a few issues around federation that we do need to work on, but part of that is mostly because none, no one on our team has really played with it, so contribution there would always be more than helpful. And I also talked about a lot of the custom customizations that we have in our ERP system, and the way we use it to link back to our OpenStack deployment, and through Agitent, and of course our billing system. But a lot of those things are built for custom plugins, and a lot of that is actually custom code in our ERP system. And one of the pieces of work outside of, but related to Agitant that we'd like to undertake is to actually open source those specific customizations. And we currently use an ERP system called Odoo, which we're gonna be migrating away from. And once we've settled on a new open source replacement for that, we actually will fully build our suite of customizations for, the, for our ERP system of choice and open source them so that ideally down the line, any new public cloud or even non-public cloud who is coming into the space will be able to take what we've built, our customizations, our ERP system solution, well, the, well, the same one that we pick, it'll be an open source one, and Agitant and OpenStack and fit this together and hopefully be in a much better place when they start than we did when we started as a company. And that might help, but ultimately, where Agitant goes from here depends a lot on the community, on the other public cloud deployers, on other clouds who may want to be more interested in using it, and ultimately on growing what exists as Agitant, getting more developers interested, and people who want to help, or little features that make sense in Agitant that don't fit anywhere else, but are useful and specific to business logic and account management. And we also need more people to play with it so that we get some better feedback, so we have some idea about what actually we can do to improve it. And the thing is, we as Catalyst Cloud will continue to push this. Like, we, we won't be dropping this project. We use it in production. We'll be maintaining this for the rest of our lives, probably. But that doesn't stop us from wanting to make it something that other companies can use. We, we don't benefit from making something that's entirely specific just for us. It's, it's better if we can find something that works for everyone. And then ultimately it'll be better for us too. So that concludes my talk and I hope there was some interesting stuff there. And I'm curious if there's any questions or anything I can help elaborate on or make a bit clearer. Yep. Uh, sorry, what? You mean uh, out of Python or? No, sorry, sorry, what other? I want translation. Oh, oh, different languages. Um, yeah, no, we, we, we could. Uh, well, the, the horizon elements could easily not be translated, so that's, that's not too bad. Yeah, but. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. So, I just 
No, 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 we haven't yet. Um, there, there are a bunch of things that we are working on that will link a bit better to OpenStack itself, but we haven't yet done any translations for the, for the service itself. But most of the stuff is built ultimately on, on Horizon, at least for GUI elements, so those will be reasonably straightforward to translate. And a lot of the uh, actual messages and edges itself, we will start splitting that off so they can be translated as well. So actually, that, I should have added that to our list of features, but yes, there is actually a, 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 a review that's been up on Garrett for quite a while about building a workflow that goes through and deletes a project everywhere in OpenStack and external systems. And there is a session on tomorrow where, which we'll be talking about the deletion of projects as well, and one of the proposals I'm going to be making is that rather than trying to integrate this into Keystone or every service, Adjutant itself serves as the much better place of going, delete this project, cool, I will talk to everyone and handle it. Because at that point you have a central point that can talk to everything, that can validate the appropriate steps and make sure things are deleted. So, yes, the answer ultimately is yes, because we need this ourselves. We have a lot of Python scripts we've written to do this for us, and we want to translate that to an API that we can trigger for account and customer terminations, and that even customers themselves can go, I don't want to bill next month, delete all my resources, but keep my account active. So, yes, ultimately. That one's a bit complicated because ideally the answer is kind of a little bit no. Because let's say, for example, Glance actually already has a mechanism for moving images from one project to another or sharing them. And that kind of stuff makes more sense in the projects themselves rather than adjutant. And we're quite clear, we actually I wrote a long documentation on project guidelines, that if, if things make better sense in the services themselves, that's where they should be implemented, not adjutant. This shouldn't be used as a stopgap measure for smaller things that don't quite make sense anywhere else unless it is specific to more account manager stuff. Maybe in some circumstances we could treat it as a more global, I want to move all my resources to somewhere else, but it was something we'd have to look at and figure out. Uh, yes, you have a question? Oh, you're just <laughs> holding an apple. Uh, Anyone else? No? Yeah. So it, it does, we are working on actually making Agit and multi-region in a more useful sense. The sign-up process does actually know, know about regions to an extent, and in fact the uh, quota management does work across multiple regions. If you talk to the API directly and ask for a bump up to a different size, it'll do it across all regions or just the one you specify. And the sign-up process, you can specify what the default region is so that when it creates that initial network and router, Adjutant does so in the region you specify. So there are other things outside of that which we'll be doing to make Adjutant a little bit more of, or aware of what region it's running in and a few more things so that it is a little bit better to properly make highly available across multiple regions. But that is sadly technical debt that we're not yet getting to. But as for doing actions across multiple regions, that is very much a thing which we need to support. That's, if, if the things we're building don't work across multiple regions and the use case requires it, then it kind of defeats the purpose. Anything else? Ah, oh, yes. Uh, sorry, uh, Glance actually has a means of letting you share an image or m change image ownership with another project. And effectively it lets you share that and then you on the other end say yes to that. So it's, it's an odd one because there are services that do that and it makes sense in certain circumstances. I, I don't know how to do that nicely because also a lot of the services to do that kind of change would need to either have APIs themselves or you'd be looking at SQL-based changes. To, to change ownership of a project without the service itself supporting that, sorry, to change the ownership of a resource without the service itself supporting that can only really be done right now 
via SQL. And that is not something that I would ever want in Agent in itself. In fact, I don't think that would ever fit as a service. We should not be calling raw SQL on other OpenStack services in Agent. That is just a terrible idea. Well, if there are no more questions, thank you very much for coming to my talk. And